Hello friends, and welcome to today's tutorial, where we will explore the powerful combination of React, PHP, and jQuery data tables to create a dynamic and efficient data table with server-side processing. Data tables provide an excellent way to display and interact with large datasets. But when combined with the versatility of React for building modern user interfaces, and the server-side processing capabilities of PHP, we can achieve a seamless and responsive data-driven application. In this tutorial, we will guide you through the process of setting up your development environment, integrating React into your project, and harnessing the features of jQuery data tables to handle large datasets efficiently. We will also implement server-side processing with PHP to ensure optimal performance by fetching and processing data on demand. So, let us get started on this journey of creating dynamic and responsive data tables in React with jQuery data tables and PHP. So this is our testing database and under this we have one users table with table column like user ID, user name and user email address. Under this table we have already inserted some fake data which we will load under jQuery data tables with server-side processing of data under React application. Here, we have already download and install React library, so if you want to know how to download and install React library in our computer, so we have already published video tutorial on this. And we have also put that video tutorial link under this video description also. So now we have open React application under text editor. And first, we want to make one component for create data table under React application. So here, under source directory, we have create one component folder. And under this folder, we have create one file with name like data tables.jsx. Under this file, we have begin with a basic import statement. Here, we are importing two crucial elements from the React library, the React object, and the use effect hook. The use effect hook is a powerful tool in React that allows us to perform side effects in our functional components. Side effects can be things like data fetching, subscriptions, or manually changing the DOM. After this, we want to import jQuery library, so first we want to download it. So we have goes to command prompt, and goes into our working directory. And after this, we have run this command, npm install jQuery. So this command will download, and install jQuery library, under our React application. Now for import jQuery library, so here we have to write, import dollar from jQuery. Next, we want to import bootstrap library, so we have goes to command prompt. And here, we have run this command, npm install bootstrap. So this command will download bootstrap library under our React application. Now for import bootstrap library, so here, we have to write import statement with path of bootstrap style sheet file. Next, we want to download data tables library under this React application. So here, in command prompt, we have first run this command npm install data tables.net. So this command will download data tables library under this React application. And after this, for download data tables themes for Bootstrap 5, so we have run this command npm install data tables.net Bootstrap 5. So this command will download Bootstrap 5 theme for data tables library. Now for first, we want to import Bootstrap 5 theme for data tables. So here, we have to write import statement with path of Bootstrap 5 theme for data tables library. After this, for import data tables library, so here, we have to write import statement with path of Bootstrap 5 data tables. 
Now we have to set up the foundation for our data tables react component and start building out our data tables component. And under this component, we will be using libraries like Bootstrap 5 and jQuery to create React Data Tables application with dynamic data. Under this component, we have to write return statement, which will display HTML output of component on web page. Under this, first we have to paste this HTML code. Now under this, we have create one table with class name is equal to table and table bordered. And after this, we have to write ID attribute is equal to data table, which we will use for initialize jQuery data tables library. Under this table, we have create one table head tag. And under this tag, we have create one table row tag. And under this tag, we have create three table column with text like ID, name and email. Next under this table, we have create one table body tag. So here our table is ready for data tables library. Now for initialize data tables library under this table. So first we have to write use effect hook function, which will be called when component has been load in the browser. Inside the use effect hook, we will initialize a data table using jQuery. So for this, we have to write data tables variable is equal to dollar selector with table ID data table with data table method. So it will initialize jQuery data table library. Under this, we have to write first option server side, which is set to true. So this option will enable server side processing of data. In second option, we have to write processing, which is set to true. So this option will display processing indicator on web page. In third option, we have to write Ajax, and under this option, we have to define API endpoint details. So here, we have to write URL option, and here we have to define PHP fetch API endpoint details. And after this, we have to write type which is set to post, so it will use post method for send API request. After this, we have to define table column details. So here, we have to write columns option. In first object, title key, we have to write ID as value. And in data key, we have to write table column name user ID. In second object, title key, we have to write name as value. And in data key, we have to write table column name user name. In third object, title key, we have to write email as value. And in data key, we have to write user email table column name as value. So here, we have defined all column details for load data in jQuery data tables. After this, we have to write return callback function, and this function will be called when data table components unmount. So under this function, we have to write data table dot destroy, so it will destroy a data table on component unmount. After this, we want to export this data tables component, so we can easily import this component. So for this, here we have to write export default statement with component name data tables. So here, our component is ready. Now we want to import this component under app.jsx file. So here, in app.jsx file, we have to write import statement. And after this, we have to write data tables component name from path of component. So now, we can use this data tables component under this app.jsx file. Now we have goes to app function, return statement, and remove this HTML code. And after this, we have simply write data tables component, so it will convert simple table to dynamic table by using jQuery data tables library.
So here our React code is ready. Now we want to write PHP code. So we have goes to API directory and open get.php file. And under this file, we have paste this header function code. This code will set the header for handle HTTP request. Next, we have to make database connection. So here, we have to write dollar $connect variable is equal to new PDO class object with three argument. So in first argument, we have to write MySQL host and database name. In second argument, we have to define username as root. And in third argument, we have to define password as password, so it will make database connection. After making database connection, now we have to write dollar $Columns variable is equal to table column like user ID, user name and user email in an array format. Below this, we have to write dollar $Query variable is equal to select query like select user ID, user name, user email from users table. So this query will fetch data from users table. Now we want to get total number of records in users table. So here we have to write dollar total record statement variable is equal to dollar connect variable with prepare method. And under this, we have to write dollar query variable. So it will prepare query for execution. Now for execute query, so we have to write dollar total record statement variable with execute method. And after query execution, we have to write dollar total record variable is equal to dollar total record statement variable with row count method, which will return total number of records from users table. After this, we want to add search condition under this select query. So here we have to write if statement and under condition we have to write php is set function with dollar post search value variable if this condition true then it will execute if block of code and under this block we have to define search condition so here we have to write dollar query variable is equal to where user id table column like dollar post search value variable same way we have add where condition for other table column like user name and user email. After this, we want to add sort data query under this select query. So for this, here we have to write if statement and under condition, we have to write is set function with dollar post order variable. If this condition true, then it will execute if block of code and under this we have to write dollar query variable and here we have append query like order by and table column name get from dollar columns variable with index value get from dollar post order zero index column variable and order direction get from dollar post order zero index direction variable but suppose above condition falls, then it will execute else block of code. And here we have to write dollar query variable. And here we have append query like order by user ID in descending order. So after adding where condition and data sort condition in select query. So now we can get total filtered records from users table. So here we have to write dollar filtered record statement variable is equal to dollar connect variable with prepare method with dollar query variable so it will make query for execution after this for execute query we have to write dollar filtered record statement variable with execute method which will execute above query and after this we have to write dollar filtered record variable is equal to dollar filtered record statement variable with row count method which will return Total filtered records. After this, we want to add start and limit data in select query. So for this, we have to write if statement and under condition, we have to write dollar post length variable value is not equal to minus one. 
If this condition true, then it will execute if block of code. And here, we have append limit data query under this dollar query variable. Now our query is ready for fetch data from users table. So for this, we have to write dollar statement variable is equal to dollar connect variable with prepare method. And under this, we have to write dollar query variable so it will prepare query for execution. And next for execute query, we have to write dollar statement variable with execute method. And for fetch data, we have to write dollar data variable is equal to dollar statement variable with fetch all method so it will fetch data from users table and store under dollar data variable. Now we want to send data, so here we have to write dollar response variable is equal an array. In first key, we have to write draw, and in value, we have to write dollar post draw variable. In second key, we have to write records total. And in value, we have to write dollar total record variable. In third key, we have to write records filtered, and in value, we have to write dollar filtered record variable. And in last key, we have to write data, and in value, we have to write dollar data variable. So this way, we have stored data under this variable. Now for send data, here we have to write PHP echo statement with JSON encode function. And under this, we have to write dollar response variable, so it will send data in JSON format. So here, our code is ready. Now for check output, first we have goes to command prompt. And here, we have run this command, which will start server and provide use base URL of our React application. So friends, here we have open base URL in browser, and here we can see that users table data has been loaded in jQuery data table under this React application. As you can see that our React application has been running in the browser. The data table on this page is dynamically fetching data from the server using server side processing. This ensures efficient handling of large data sets. Now, let's take a closer look at our data table. Each column is intelligently organized, allowing users to sort, search, and navigate through the data effortlessly. This level of interactivity is what makes jQuery data tables such a powerful tool for presenting data in web applications. I hope you found this journey into building a React application with data tables and PHP insightful. If you have any questions, or if there is a specific topic, you had like us to cover in the next series feel free to drop your thoughts in the comments below do not forget to like share and subscribe for more web development tutorials thanks for joining me today and until next time